Are you tired of the same old pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 4,000 hours of the best pro wrestling events from over 110 of the biggest names in the industry from over 15 countries around the globe. Get your free trial today at powerslam.tv. The following is brought to you by the Social Suplex Podcast Network. Welcome to the 58th episode of Social Suplexes Podcast about AEW with a proclivity for positivity. Welcome to my All Things Elite. I am your host, Floyd Johnson. With me today is, um, again, for the second week in a row, it, it feels like the old days of Around the Ring. Hey, I got Mr. Dave Brown, my friend that I call Silky. How you doing today, Dave? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm not sure if uh, if your listeners will be doing well after having to suffer through me for two weeks, but uh, thank you for having me on the show. It's always a pleasure. All right. So I'm just do a little housekeeping. The reason the show's coming late, it's being recorded on Sunday morning. The show's coming late is because we found a few bed bugs at home. I I have no problem delving into my personal life. We found two or three. It wasn't like we found a family or shit, but, uh, because of that, uh, me and my wife are only off Saturday and Sunday together. So yesterday we spent time literally take, well, she mostly did all the work, but I was there saying I was doing stuff and she, we moved the bed around vacuumed and she had bought this bug spray offline and we spray and you have to spray it twice a day a week. And it was just a whole other deal and a whole day of doing stuff. As I've mentioned, we live in a one bedroom apartment. You think, Oh, you think, Oh, one bedroom apartment. How much stuff can you have? Well, my wife was a fully formed adult when I met her and moved in. So she had all her shit. And then me, who just came from living in a three-bedroom house, had all my shit. So there's probably about a three-bedroom house worth of shit in a one-bedroom apartment. So if you might know, as if you might know from, as Dave pointed out, hot, Hotel Impossible bed bugs is not something to be played around with. Uh, so we wanted to make sure we got cleared up. So I was not going to do a show this week. I was going to hit up Jeremy, the head of Social Suplex, and say, not doing a show. But I just I sat there and I went through all the stuff and I'm just like, we would be missing too much with BTE 200. Uh, AEW Dynamite was great this week. The announcement of the TV taping schedule, all of that stuff. There's no way I could skip this week. So, uh, Dave. Yes. How are you doing, sir? You know, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. It looks like um, there's a possibility thing. People might be trying to move things back to more normal-ish sooner rather than later, at least uh, here in the uh, great state of Oklahoma, which means I'm sure we will in a few months have a huge spike in in the Rona. Uh, so that, that will be good. Um, speaking of, I... I laughed way too hard at at a joke I heard on another podcast, and you, you'll probably know as I as I say the joke, and I'm not going to do it well. But uh, the host was talking about something he would never ever want to do or never ever want to watch, and he said, "I'd rather be coughed on by a coronavirus patient." 
I laughed so hard <laughs> and it's so wrong. I know, I know this, but I had tears welled up in my eyes. I told my daughter the story yesterday. We were waiting to get some Chick-fil-A, which took forever because poor folks Chick-fil-A are getting slammed. And, uh, and I told her that and she's like, dad, it's not that funny. And I'm crying again. I'm laughing so hard. And just as I'm telling you, I'm starting to like, I feel the, the giggle coming up. It, it's like that. There's that scene in Pulp Fiction that every time I see it, I laugh so hard because the first time I saw it in the theaters in 1994, I almost lost my shit laughing so hard. And that's a scene in the car. If you've never seen Pulp Fiction, you know, spoiler alert for a movie that's damn near 30 years old, but where, uh, where John Travolta looks back and he happens to be holding his gun in a way he shouldn't. And then boom. And, uh, he says, Oh shit, I shot Marvin in the face. And Samuel Jackson responds with, what the fuck do you do that for? Oh, it's, <laughs> I don't do it justice. Oh, it's still 25 years later. That shit makes me laugh. Oh my God. <sighs> Well, <laughs> yeah. Oh, speaking of, man, and we'll get to it when we talk about Dynamite. Um, Jericho had a just hilarious bit during, I forget which match. I think it was the Darby, our Darby Allen, um, Sammy Guevara match that just had me rolling. Um, but we'll get there later. All right. We will get there later. Uh, just a reminder um, uh, do you want to do the ad read again, sir? Sure, yes. So uh, just to let everybody know, and I do have a serious question for, for you, Floyd, for everyone out there. Are you sick and tired of the same old pro wrestling? I know I am. This is why you need to check out Power Slam TV. That's right, man. Powerslam.tv, where you can get over 4,000 thousand hours of content from over 110 of your favorite wrestling brands and promotions from countries all across the globe right under your laptop or mobile device if you use the uh, code social suplex at checkout you get one month free that's one month free on us the social suplex network i say us i didn't have anything to do with it i'm the guest here i don't i don't know they make the deals they sign the paperwork money passes hands it's it's all a thing but you check it out, powerslam.tv. Use the code social suplex. You get a month free. It's good stuff. All right. And just remember download uh, All Things Elite, Google, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And make sure you are supporting us by following at AT Elite Pod, at Social Suplex, at Phoenix AEW, and at All Elite Tiffany on Twitter. And for uh, Dave, it's at Oklahoma Lefty. That is correct. So where all is the social suplex? I know you say all the places. Is it on all the the major platforms? From what I understand, yes. Okay. So what, what? real quick, what platform do you use to listen to uh, podcasts? I use Google Podcasts. Google Podcasts, nice. I, I primarily use Stitcher. I use Google Podcasts because Google Podcasts is the, like, that's where I know everything is. I've yet to, like, even if someone does a podcast, you know, random podcast with three followers, it's on Google Podcasts. They are very good about staying updated. And, like, the one that I used before, uh, one I used before, there was no, uh, it, you know, sometimes it would show up, sometimes it wouldn't. It was just, I, I got away from it. I didn't want, I don't want to I don't want to say which one I used before cuz I'm not trying to bury anybody but it was sure. just it was just not always there. I I just I for whatever reason I started using Stitcher years ago and that's the one I've stuck with. If um sometimes if there's a show that's not on there but says on Spotify because I I listen to music on Spotify like all the time. I'll listen to a show on Spotify but for whatever reason I don't like using Spotify for podcasts as much. It's weird. I'm, I don't understand. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. <clears throat> um, yeah, the big news of the week. Uh, before as we get started, AEW announced the taping schedule. Voices of Wrestling and their their Patreon reached out to Tony Khan to get clarification on the upcoming Dynamite schedule. I am one of their Patreon users. Voices are uh, it's pa- Voices of Wrestling. Patreon.VoicesOfWrestling or VoicesOfWrestling.com slash Patreon. Yeah, um, you can get it both ways. Yeah, I'm, I'm only plugging them because I am a subscriber. Uh, like I said, I am not a person that subscribes to Patreons. They actually put out way too much audio for me to keep up with. I'm, a t- I'm more of a TV guy. 
Uh, but I joined. I was gonna give ten dollars to Mr. Conrad Thompson to get commercial free of all his shows, and I decided, you know what, I am gonna support the. I wouldn't call him the little guy, but the not not as big guy. You know, and I uh, decided to just support Voices of Wrestling. Like I said, I still pretty much just listen to the flagship, and but this is news. This came from it, so I'm feeling my uh, feeling my Patreon support is paying off. Uh, so the taping schedule: Dynamite will be live on May sixth. So not this week, but then not this Wednesday, but the next coming Wednesday. So they're gonna record. It looks like they're gonna record the sixth and the thirteenth. May 20th, they'll return live because that's the week of Double or Nothing, and Double or Nothing will be live. Uh, they have not determined their post Double or Nothing schedule. They will not be full crew, uh, crew, crew shows as international talent is still unavailable and those uncomfortable with participating continue to be excused. He expects about double the talent that was, was available for the last set of tapings in Georgia, which was about, I think, 15, 10 main roster people and then a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of local talent. Uh, he also noted AEW must continue to pretend produce new content. It's not live or recorded, but it does have to be new as to not default on their television contract, which essentially is the loan revenue stream at this time, along with pay-per-view. Uh, yeah, so AEW has to produce content. Uh, I, I wanted to get this because this actually lists, uh, leads to a question we have on Twitter. And Ryan Evans, one of our loyal listeners, every week he sends me questions. He is, very, you know, very into the show, and I love, I love that. Thank you, Ryan. He said, "I'm going to present this to Dave and get your opinion, and then I'll give mine." Do you okay. personally think WWE and AEW should be doing shows during this time? Because I personally don't at all. So he doesn't think anyone should be doing shows. Dave, what do you think? Um, I don't think anyone should be doing live shows. I think it's a situation where if it is, if they can do it with a super minimal staff and they just bring in the barest of bones and film like four weeks worth of stuff, you know, film like a month or two's worth of stuff in like a two day period. And, you know, kind of like Impact would, would film like six months worth of crap in like three days and then just ride that out. You know, that's that's understandable because I think where, where WWE is a relationship with their broadcast partners that they can get away with um, kind of skirting around their contracts because it was – there were rumors and Meltzer said things about um, – one of the reasons they were going to go back to doing live programming was because Vince was afraid they were going to get um, their contracts were going to get changed on them. And then they, I'm assuming what happened is he talked to the networks and networks were like, we're not going to screw you over on this. They've established enough of a relationship, especially with USA that they can, you know, have, have that. And I mean, plus worst case scenario, both Fox and USA knows that if God forbid they can't produce any talent, they have 50 plus years of content from multiple sources that they can just edit together and, and throw up and would make compelling television. Whereas AEW does not. So uh, TNT is taking a big chance on AEW. And so the fact that they're holding them to look, we really need new content. Um, I think my thing, the thing I, I wonder about is with all this going on, um, why would you continue to produce dynamite? And to some extent, why even continue to produce BTE and just put all of that stuff? I mean, not dynamite, um, dark, you know, don't do dark, don't do BTE, uh, and put all of that content on dynamite. Now that having been said, there's a lot of stuff on BTE. I don't think Tony Khan would ever let sniff dynamite cause it's just silly and goofy. Um, but you know, you could, you could get a little more creative. Um, and there's part of me that's like, no, you should not do this. But I under, I also understand that these people need, they need to get their paychecks. And, um, the only, the only way for AEW to stay 
afloat right now is to continue to produce TV content because of their contract. So I'm not going to hold it against them. In a perfect world, no, they wouldn't be making shows right now. No, they'd just be showing you know highlights of everything they've done so far, and including stuff from BTE. You know, that at that point, you have Tony Khan write a huge check to a you know, to ROH to get the content for All In, um, and you just do the best you can. But I mean, you you do you do what you got to do. Uh, so I have a completely different uh, point of view. I- you go for it. Of course, you, of course, you should be recording. Of course, you should be taping. Um, wrestling is one of those things. The show goes on. It's always been that way, uh, as far as I know. And it's just like the show goes on. I mean, uh, take whatever precautions you can, but you know, go for what you know. I, I am one of those people that I, I am respectful of this pandemic. I am respectful of everything. But it's like you're gonna die of something. You know what I mean? I'm just I'm not you know, the whole idea me and you've had this conversation. The whole idea of going out of your way to extend life is just lost on me. You know what I mean? It's just like right. go to work, do your thing, make T V, I'll watch it. Or, hey, if you're gonna record, I'll watch that too. Do I think you should do what's best. I, in my idea, in my head, there's there's no reason to shut down. And I understand where Tony is. It's because Georgia and Florida, the places he records are opening. So he doesn't even have that where he can go to TNT and say, you know what? We can't record because Florida says we can't have anybody. We can't record TV. Georgia says we can't record TV. They're the two states opening up. So it's like literally you have nothing to stand on. When you say yeah. you're not going to record, they're like, so yeah, they're, well, our people live in different states. Well, you kind of knew that when you started this, right? You know, it's like uh, I've heard the idea of baseball is like everybody moving to a certain city and staying in a hotel and being quarantined and just going to play the games. I people might think I'm cold hearted or whatever, which is very hard to believe because I'm a very nice guy. Why don't why doesn't AEW do that? Why don't you rent out a place in, I mean, he's freaking Tony Khan, rent out a place in Jacksonville, bring them all there, quarantine them, and then record TV. I mean, they all get paid a significant amount of money to do what they do. I don't think that's too huge of a sacrifice. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And it it would, (laughs) you just, you bring people in, especially if you can spread it out. If you can record, you know, six weeks worth of TV in a two-day time, that you could you could do that safely. Just that's do that. the big thing that that's the big thing with me. It's uh they're gonna record on May twentieth. Uh they're gonna record on May twentieth. I think they should record on May twentieth. Oh or not May tw- uh May twenty seventh. The one right after Dynamite or right or right after uh D D O N that should be good two to three months of recording. I'm talking about bring everybody that's willing to come in in and record eight shows and because you don't you're not building to anything, just go ahead and record all of June, all of July, and get to August. Agreed. Yeah, so I I mean like I said, I, I get it. I am one of those things I'm one of those people I don't. Th- I think uh, if AEW quit doing TV, like started showing like old shows or whatever, I think it would kill their company. They're a startup. They're still a startup. Yeah. I, th- I, I forgot the length of time, but you're a startup for a certain amount of years. You're not. You know, it's not like you. You think startup. You think three months. No, you're a startup for like five years. You know what I mean? It's just. They got a nice TV contract. They got everything. But you, to get into the consciousness of America to where casual people know what the AEW is different from WWE, it takes a while. It does. It does. And, and it's they, they can't afford to not be on TV right now. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, granted, TV stations are kind of thirsty for content because they're all – all the networks are starting to run out. I, I think I even heard some of the soap operas have run out of of taped material. Um, so that's that's you know that doesn't happen 
So yeah, they're they're dying for content. See, and, and, and that's the thing with soap operas and stuff like that. They have forty years of material. They could, you know, Days of Our Lives, Young and the Restless. They could go back and show classic like episodes of their shows. You know that everybody remembers. AEW doesn't have that benefit, right? But yeah. I would say with all this extra time that like TNT has. Dude, I would be showing my pay-per-views on their shows, like the ones that we've already done. I would had do a day where you could watch Double or Nothing, All Out, Full Gear, you know, uh, Revolution. Watch all of them, and I would I would do I would basically spam content on TNT the same way WWE is doing with Fox. I would do with TNT and all their channels just to start building up that fan base because. The thing AEW does best, in my opinion, is the pay-per-view. So I would do what I can to let people see that pay-per-view. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, yeah. like you could catch up, you know. You probably right. missed a few of those. <laughs> Even though I am your friend and there's no reason you should ever miss a show, but... I have missed a lot of shows, but I... I... Did watch a bit of this week's shows. Uh, I know, right? Right. I was uh, talking to Ryan, who's been on the show, our friend Ryan Aaron, and AEW and NXT was on, and he's like, "I'm binge watching ER," and I'm like, "The fuck? What?" <laughs> he's like, "Well, very little entertains me now, and this is entertaining me, so I'm gonna watch that." And I was just, I just, I laughed because it's just like. I you know Wednesdays at seven are wrestling now. You know Mondays at yeah. seven have been wrestling for good lord how long? How long? I can't say about SmackDown because they've switched t channels and times more times than anybody. But my life Monday at seven or eight on USA has been appointment viewing, and now it's that way with TNT on Wednesday nights and pretty much NXT like right after. So. Yeah, and I know, I know, I know I'm a horrible person, but I do watch both religiously. So, there you go. But there's, there's, if anyone thinks you're a horrible person for watching what are probably the two best wrestling shows on TV every week, um, you're either a a member of a cult or you are just, I don't know, I don't know what, because it's, okay, as as much as I loathe Vince McMahon, I think I think Vince McMahon is some of the worst um, examples of humanity. I think NXT has consistently, over the last five years, been some of the best pro wrestling on anywhere. I mean, it's as far as the best pro wrestling in the world, you'd probably have to say New Japan is the best. And for a long time, I NXT disagree. has been second to that. Yeah, I disagree well, on that. I always have. I love New Japan pro wrestling, but it's just pro wrestling. I don't think New Japan would be popular at all if it was like on american tv all the time i think it would be a very niche thing because it's just pro wrestling i mean and that's fair and I, that's what i like about it i like it's just the matches are, and, 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 yeah, are fantastic and, and that's great but that's a fake again when you get down to scripted fighting you know uh again when you look at the most popular times in wwe it really wasn't about the scripted fighting True. It was about the story that went along with it, you know what I mean? And it's just like I I loved I love pro wrestling and just pro wrestling is great, but I do like the, you, know, you know, I like the uh, the fireworks and the music and Cody's grand entrance and things like that. In wrestling, it has to be more than just wrestling. And that's why when people say New Japan is the best, New Japan is the best at what they do. They are. But to me, it's just straightforward. One guy's better than the other. And it's just like, okay, I need more. I need more. Like I said, I love New Japan. Don't get me wrong. I listen to New Japan podcasts. I do love New Japan. Don't get me wrong. I just don't think it's the best in the world. Just like, I, I mean, I know Dave Meltzer believes it's the best in the world, and I have no problem with it. I have no problem with Dave because he's a man with the opinion, and you're allowed to have an opinion. Me personally, the glitz and glamour, my two favorite wrestling organizations are NXT and AEW because, the, the reason because, you get the straight pro wrestling, but you get a lot more of the entertainment value in the stories that you don't get within the New Japan. And of course, people say, well, New Japan, their stories are subtle. I don't want to be, 
I don't want subtle. I'm American. I want to get hit over the head with the story. So yes, you you want the um, <laughs> God. What is it they call it? Um, uh, the obvious hammer. No, damn it. Um, subtlety hammer. Subtlety hammer. Yes. Yeah. You like being hit with a subtlety hammer. Yeah, I do because yeah, it's just I don't want to look for the story. I want the story right there. <laughs> I'm just like I don't even like movies like that when it's like um, David Lynch. If if people know who that is, he. Uh, um, what is the show? Um, uh, oh my God, Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks. He is very much, I'm going to present you something and I'm not going to give you any answers. It's whatever you want it to be. I will never watch a movie or TV show of his again. Dude, have you ever seen Eraserhead? Not that I remember. Oh my God. It is the, it is the true, it's like one of his earliest films. Um, it is bizarre. It is the it, so here, here's my, my t- kind of track as far as the weirdest, most bizarre films I thought I'd ever thought I'd seen in my life. So in the early 90s, I saw um, Heathers, and I was like, wow, that's some, that's some effed up stuff. That's weird. And then I saw A Clockwork Orange. I was like, oh, my God, that is incredible. I, I don't ever want to see this again. That is some weird, fucked up shit. Yeah, and then I saw Racerhead, and I was like, nope, this takes the cake. This is the most bizarre out there thing I have ever seen in my entire life. And it, it, again, it's one of those experiences you have once and you're like, wow, I don't ever want to experience that again, but I'm glad I, I, I saw it. Um, David Lynch also though, he, if you kind of, um, make him follow an, an actual story, he can produce some incredible stuff. He did a film in the, what was it, early eighties? He did the elephant man. Uh, movie, um, which was about a guy who had elephantitis, um, and uh, it, it is it's heart wrenching. I was in a I was literally curled up in a ball in the fetal position, bawling at the end of it. It was so heart wrenching. Um, gorgeous movie. He also did that atrocity in the eighties, uh, Dune, which he hates, and he took his name off of it because it was utter dog crap. It was horrible, despite the fact that it had Sting and Patrick Stewart in it. How do you screw up something with Sting and Patrick Stewart? I don't know. Oh, a lot of I mean, uh, but Dune, Dune is a cult classic. I mean, a yeah. lot of people love Dune. I don't know why, man, because it's, it's a hot mess. Um, well, dude, your tastes are a little different than other people's. What? You know? Really? Yeah. How it, many times is... have you watched Smallville? Completely all the way through, yeah. two or three at least. No one um, likes that show that much. <laughs> see, that's not true. I, <laughs> I, no, I, now, you you like that show way more than everyone else. <laughs> I, I like it a lot. I've watched uh, Alias, I think, all the way through s- at least six times. Exactly. No one I've, likes that show that much. Oh, that show is great. I've watched Veronica <laughs> Mars all the way through. Well, actually, I've only seen the newest season, the fourth season, once. But prior to that, I've seen all the other seasons in the movie three or four times. Exactly. Dude. Great stuff. You know what comes out every day? New content. Why are you watching that old shit like a hundred times? Because I love it. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. You're different than everyone else. That is true. And I do (laughs) wear that as a badge of honor. All right. So, but back to my point, I don't like subtle. I like there. I like it in front of me. I, my favorite movies are romantic comedies. You generally know who the girl and the guy are going to be together in the first 10, 15 minutes of the movie if you're paying attention. I'd say, I'd say 10, 15. That's a little long. Probably five. You get introduced to the guy. You get introduced to the girl. You know they're going to be together, right? One of my, one of my uh, m- movies that I hate the most is uh, Sweet Home Alabama. Is because the guy that ends up getting left, I was like, dude, he was way better option than the guy that she ended up picking. So... Uh, but Wait, who is in that one? Reese Witherspoon, Patrick Dempsey, and I forgot the other guy. That he's kind of like a poor man's Matthew McConaughey. Uh, I forgot his name. Uh, but yeah, she ends up with the country poor man's Matthew McConaughey, even though Patrick Dempsey is the better pick. So I was just saying. I mean, this is a wrestling show, but that's what I'm saying. Just because you, I mean, you know, they the Daves think the New Japan is the best doesn't necessarily mean it's the best. It's not everyone's cup of tea. Oh, and that's fair. I mean, I, I 
I all the time will say, you know, this is something I love. That doesn't mean it's no, it's everyone just, else is going to like it. No, it's just in the IWC. It's almost this accepted fact that New Japan's the best wrestling product in the world. I'm just like, I don't agree with that. Well, if if you <sighs> if the ter- if you're talking about just pure actual bell to bell wrestling, I think you can make that argument that it, 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 yeah. And even when I was is. young, that has never been my wrestling. Ever. Even, That's what, you're a Vince McMahon person. No, so when you, I'm just saying 80s and 90s with Dusty Rhodes. When uh when Jimmy Garvin and Tully Blanchard fought uh for Precious and you know, that kind of material and it was like uh when uh the horseman broke Dusty Rhodes' leg, it's always been a soap opera. That's those hard times, baby. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't all just about wrestling. It's, it was a soap opera. The horseman, the idea that the guys just, you know, jump people at the end of the show. That that wasn't based in, in real sports. I mean, I mean, no That's one's true. jumping Tom Brady two days before they give it game. <laughs> no, but, you know, they might be deflating footballs. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm just saying. It's just like wrestling has, to, to me, I have never equated it with real sports, and I will never because it's always been in a, 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 what is it, uh, a fiction base. Uh, a sports fiction, uh, a sports fiction soap opera. Yeah, and you know that is interesting. Like the the yeah. people who come at it from a sports thing, because I also have never been a sports fan. But you, I mean, you are a sports fan. You're a diehard yeah. sports fan. I'm not. I mean, I flirted with liking baseball for a while. I can hold a competent conversation about football. Um, I, you know, I can somewhat hold a semi-competent conversation about basketball. I'm not completely ignorant on the subjects, but I don't follow sports either. Uh Um, But yeah, I never, like, to me, it was... And honestly, I mean, even just fighting in general, that doesn't seem very sports-like. I mean, granted, I... MMA. MMA. Yeah. I mean, MMA and professional wrestling are probably the best fiction, non-fiction comparative things, but the whole thing was, it was like, when I watch wrestling, I compare it more to a drama or like Young and the Restless, that kind of stuff for men. Do I then I compare it to uh, MMA? Oh yeah, it ha- it has far more in common with Days of Our Lives than it does with uh, yeah. UFC. Yeah, like so, prof- like professional wrestling's coming on at seven and MMA's coming on at seven. I'm not gonna be like, man, which one I pick? I'm gonna watch professional wrestling. I'm gonna watch MMA or whatever because it's just, it, it's just they're two different things. I hate when people compare them. The the only reason to compare them is if you're a company trying to make money off of it because of course MMA draws this big audience so you want to you want the cable companies to think that wrestling is going to draw the same audience as MMA but honestly the two fandoms are completely different it's yeah yeah like if you take a diehard MMA fan and talk to him about professional wrestling I don't want to watch that fake shit right then exactly. you got, then you got uh, if you take a diehard wrestling fan on unlike me they'd be like I don't watch it you want to watch MMA that shit's barbaric it's two men trying to kill each other. You know what I mean? And the, <laughs> you know, the complete irony about that is uh, overall, <laughs> pro wrestling is far worse on the body than because, both because, boxing and MMA. Because you do it more. It's, it's a, if you did an MMA fight 200 days a year, as Ronda Rousey pointed out, which I don't think she says much right in the world, you'd die. Because, yeah, MMA is much harder on your body. You just do it less. Right. Uh, that said, though, they are they are much quicker to stop a fight. If something bad goes down and someone like they will they will stop that shit quick. So, um, generally speaking, yeah. But yeah, I and like I said, it's just if you were in an MMA fight every day, you know, you you get much hit much harder and you get knocked out much quicker. And the fact that the person is trying to hurt you is a whole different thing. I just like I like I said, I wouldn't even compare them. Because it, being a wrestler is like being a stuntman in Hollywood, which is probably more harmful to your body than being an MMA fighter. You get what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's just it's volume. You know that's all. That's why I, that's how I think. 
like I said, we went off on a whole tangent here. All yeah. I'm like, like what you like, and you know, when but when people call something unequivocally the best, you will probably get an argument from me. You know, I don't feel that, and I was like, I'll jump in the Jordan debate or whatever debate you want, because I don't think anything's unequivocally the best. It's all depend on what you like. There you go. Yeah. So I do like AEW, my favorite wrestling show. That's what you will hear from me. AEW is my favorite. You will not hear AEW is the best because that's very opinion. I mean, that's opinion based. Because <laughs> there's nothing to really rank it on. What do you rank it on? Like I always, uh, I was, I would uh, love to do like a, a forum with a whole bunch of different people with different views, and that can say stuff without getting angry, and tell, c- kind of come up with a definitive what makes a match great. Ooh, that see now that would be interesting. Like everyone agrees, Okada and Omega. You know, whichever one you pick is one of the best wrestling matches they ever seen. I agree with that. I'm one of those people that say I won't. I 100% unequivocally agree. I've been watching wrestling most of my life, dude. They put on a performance that knocked uh, knocked my socks off, and I can watch it any time. But why was it great? That's a good question. That's the intangible. Yeah, it's like why was it great? It's like I know it was great. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's like, uh, it's, you know, it's like beauty is in the eye of the beholder or as a Supreme Court justice once said about porn, you'll know it when you see it. And that's what, and that's what I'm like. But yeah, I know, I know a great match when I see it, but, but, uh, yeah, so we got the AEW taping schedule, went off on a huge tangent here. Uh, but now we're going to get to BTE 200, we're starting at a big 200th episode of BTE. Matt and Nick have a wrestling match. Then they show a montage of pretty much the whole time all in and, you know, lots of things from over the 200 episodes. Then they end in a car. And a lot of people said it felt like the last BTE. Dave, as a not loyal BTE uh, watcher, what did you think of this show? You know, I it's funny. I... I have traditionally not ever enjoyed BTE. I watched it last week. I watched it this week. These have been some of the more enjoyable BTEs um, that I've seen. Oh, the th- one thing I loved is the very beginning. They used basically all of their intros, except they made sure to not include Flip Gordon. Um, they had Marty Skrull was all over the intros of this thing, but Flip Gordon was not. That uh, that I wondered what was up with that. Probably nothing, but... Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I thought the match was kind of silly, um, but I mean that's what it was going to be. If you thought it was going to be anything other than silly, then you weren't, you know, paying attention. Um, but the um, the montage actually, you know, got me a little choked up a couple times, and um, that surprised me a little. Um, but I uh, I enjoyed it. I did. I honestly, I, I agree though. I felt like at the very end, it was like. Yep, this feels like the end. And I've heard things that um, rumors or, or what, I forget where exactly I heard them or which website I saw it on, but um, there has been talk that BTE might not be around anymore. Um, and in in a way, I think maybe this would be a perfect ending for it. Just, just be done and concentrate all your content creating um, skills on doing stuff for dynamite, especially now that you have, you know, potentially not going to be able to do live shows in front of people for Lord knows how long though. It might start up sooner than we realize. Um, but even if it doesn't, uh, why you've got the perfect time to end it. It's the 200th episode. It's anniversary and you have this, this weird ending. So my, just, yeah, focus on and focus on the other stuff. Yeah, um, I, I, you know, I agree. Um, I, I, you know, I wouldn't say it came. I did not get the fact that it came off as an ending uh, at all. Uh, maybe I'm just slow. I just thought it just came off as them reflecting over 200 episodes. Uh, um, but you heard from Dave Meltzer earlier this week that. They don't know how much longer they'll be doing it. So, 
So yeah, that's yeah, and the it's thing. it's probably it would be probably a nice break for them to not have to worry about doing that all the time. That's got to be a ton of extra work. Yeah, it because you know the show was on the way to get their name out there, mm-hmm. their names out there. You know, right. they they run a promotion. It's just. There's no, to me, there's no reason for the show anymore. Agreed. I love the show. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm I'm very big on the show, but I love it. Uh, As far as the match, I was going to give my thoughts on the match. I, like I said, it was super entertaining to me. I do, I do like, I am a person that likes their form of comedy and turning, but I just think they just kind of laid it all out on the line. And that's something I'm always going to appreciate. Uh, is when people lay it all out on the line. So they did. They had a great match. Uh, I, th- I like I said. I think this is one of those things that should be on your match of the year type thing because they. I mean, they went back to their roots, which was backyard wrestling. I think BTE will be around at least until their book actually comes out. I think it's a great way to promote their book. They have a book coming out. Yes. I did not know this. Oh, good lord. So you really like fast forward through the show, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it's on every show. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I watch that, that sucker on double time. <laughs> yes, I'm like, that's why, I don't, that's why I don't watch things on double time. Right there. Right and there. I'll, you just also, made though, I'm, my point. <laughs> I'm not an invested fan. Yeah. I mean, it's fine, but I would never, I wouldn't sit here and go, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I am a fan of AEW. I know. I, I mean, I enjoy it when I like it, but I don't go out of my way to watch it. I would generally, I would consider myself a fan of, say, NXT, but I don't even go out of my way to watch that anymore. Um, yeah, yeah. To be fair, I've been going to school this semester and, you know, time's limited, but. Yeah. On that montage, it was crazy how much of those things I was at. You know? That you know that I can see that because you are you go to stuff all the time. You're yeah, and I go to there. there's like the last two years I go to like I've never missed an AEW pay per view, you know. And I mean like the big pay per views I've never missed one. I I've been to Dynamite, let's see, Kansas City, Dallas, Austin, the first one in Washington D.C. So I've been to four Dynamites. So, yeah. I don't miss a lot of their shows. It's kind of funny. I haven't went to the one in Jacksonville, but I'm definitely going to do that when I can. Yeah. Whenever they do their first show is going to be my big thing. That's what I'm waiting on. Is when they do their first big show from being back. Uh, Me and Tiffany have talked about it. We said, hey, we're going to be in the first row for that first big show back. That would be a good show to be at. That, that, crowd's going to go bonkers because you know everyone's so sick of being locked up and when you finally get to go and scream your head off and yeah yeah that'll be a that'll be a bonkers time it will be a bonkers time yeah so uh yeah so uh that was but yeah they put on a great match uh the tennis uh, racket stuff when they jumped from on top into on the tennis court that was crazy to me uh, it was just uh, the spiked boot, the reference to uh, the Marty Jannetty, Shawn Michaels heel turn. All of this was just, all of that was in the sh- uh, in that uh, match, and it was just, it was great. It was great because you know, one's got blonde hair, one's got brown hair. It's it's you know the Rockers, the Rock and Roll Express, Matt and Jeff Hardy, now the Young Bucks. It's just yeah. it, it it all goes into it. So. Yeah. So okay, I have never been able to tell which one is Matt and which one is Nick. It's the simplest thing. Matt has dark hair. Nick has light hair. Just like Matt Hardy has dark hair and Jeff Hardy has light hair. Okay. So the one thing I was wondering, I'm like, okay, what was other than maybe Nick is still, you know, quote unquote injured. Now I don't even know if he's actually injured or not. But having Matt win, I just didn't. I was, I wasn't quite sure the the psychology or the point of it all. Um, that said, the Canadian destroyer into the pool was fantastic. That was a great spot. Yeah, um, it's the idea that the little brother can never beat the back, uh, big brother. They, it's long term story line telling because back in the backyard wrestling, Nick never beat Matt. Okay. And I have to admit, I've always preferred Matt. I think I've, I've prefer him as a wrestler. I just, 
he I don't know there's something Nick has a more punchable face and Matt comes off as like a nicer guy they're both extremely nice uh, that I, does not surprise me yeah they're both extremely nice they're like hey buddy you were here here they know remember seeing you and I remember I told them like uh, I didn't know it. you know I watched them wrestle for two years without knowing who was who I will that's the first thing I actually met them in line, real life, had them sign things and not know which signature was which. <laughs> that doesn't make me feel so bad then. Yes. So uh, uh, one of the times we met and, you know, I was t- talking about the Oklahoma City trip and he's like, yeah, I remember that trip. We uh, flew in, did a signing because uh, it was at Oklahomania 1. Uh, Matt and Nick were there, and uh, the biggest Oklahomania. The was... biggest Oklahomania, and it was they came in, flew in for an hour, did a signing, literally fifteen dollars. The meet and greet, I got Young Buck fans. I literally still have fans signed by Nick and Matt, and no clue who they were <laughs> at that time. No clue. I had kind of heard their names. <laughs> But I had no clue who they are. And I've met them like eight times since then or something like that. And I think that's over. I think it's like six, really. I think the actual number is six and since then. And, you know, like I'm very familiar with them. But, yeah, at that time I did it because their stuff was 15 bucks for everything. It's probably not 15 bucks now. No, no. I've paid considerably more than that to meet them since then. Considerably. More than that. <laughs> well, they got the, they they have to get their new hustle going, man. That's, do. Uh, yeah, yeah. The first taste was like free, you know. And it's like, hey, you want to see us now? Pony up. No, exactly. no, no. They're uh, they are they're great. I I was doing it to support them. I don't generally meet people more than once, but they are my favorites. You know, not my favorite tag team, of course, but my favorite. Like when you want to talk about the greatest. For me, the greatest tag team division ever, it's going to be AEW in like two months. Oh, you mean when the uh, Revolt shows up? Yeah, because they're my, f- they are were my favorite at one time in an order. My favorite WWE tag team was the Revival. My favorite Impact TV tag team was uh, Proud and Powerful. My fa- LAX at the time. Yeah, LAX at the time. My favorite New Japan tag team was the Young Bucks. Yeah, and they're all going to be in one place. But it sounds like uh, the Revolt's going to make a stop in NWA first, hitting that Crockett Cup. Dude, the Revolt was the NWA was built for them. Oh yeah, it would be. I mean, even if I, you know they got the call as soon as as soon as they were released, Tony or Cody or the Young Bucks were on the phone with them. They're like, yeah, we we really want to do a run in, in NWA first. Uh, let me just say this. Yeah, they made the call to Billy. You know, Billy didn't have to make the call. They're like, okay, we're doing this. I mean, that's I mean, that's what they do. So yeah. um, let's see where we at in the show. All right, AEW Dark Review. There was only two matches, of course, squash matches. Uh, one was Penelope Ford pinning Anna J with a fisherman suplex. I thought Anna J looked really good in the match. I love Penelope Ford's uh, – Fisherman Suplex. She is a super athlete, and just the bridge on it is amazing. Um, and Anna J has been getting, you know, a lot of attention for being, you know, looking like she does. And then there was Cody Rhodes versus Joe Alonzo. It was a good match. Cody gave Joe a lot, but he finished with a Gale Lock, which the best way I can describe it, it's a Scorpion Death Lock with your legs. But instead of holding your arm, he held the second leg with his other leg, which looks like it puts more pressure on it. If I was going to go all Taz on it and uh, try to explain to you why it hurts. But it was I thought that was really cool. Uh, So he submits him with that move, shakes his hand after the match. Very good. Uh, You know, it was it's good to have Cody on dark. And that's the great thing about, I've even said that about like superstars and main event and all that stuff. Occasionally you need Roman Reigns on there. Occasionally you need Braun Strowman on there. Not all the time, but you should give fans that are loyal and turning on those shows a reason to watch them. And yeah. not having your big stars on it 
you know, hurts the show. It's like, dude, why can't Braun Strowman do a five minute squash match on main event? Well, I mean, well, five minutes, that's a little long. A minute and a half squash match on main event. Why couldn't he do that? Why couldn't Roman Reigns, why couldn't Charlotte tap out a local contender on a uh, main event? It's just, it's not that big a deal. You know what I mean? Agreed. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't happen very often. It only happens every once in a while when they're like, oh, we need to make this show important again. Yeah. And then. Yeah. And it's just like it should be more consistent. I know that's the other ways to get other names out there, but you can get other names out there. You can make people look good in a loss. I thought Anna J looked really impressive in this loss to Penelope Ford. And I thought Joe Alonzo looks like someone they can use going forward in this match against Cody. And, you know, speaking of, of jobbers who look good, when we talk about Dynamite, there was a, a jobber who looked good against a certain super uh, super former IWGP heavyweight champion that that match kind of exploded the interwebs for a day. And I know that was uh, it was not one that you said you have to watch, but I, I wanted to watch that. But we'll get to that. In a minute. I figured, you, see, it was really shocked you hadn't watched it because that was such a big thing. I figured, you know, and only I figured everyone in the in as I call it the IW well air everybody calls it the IWC would have watched it. So I thought you had watched it just because it was such a, you know, polarizing thing. And I was like me, it's like it was like a million other matches I've seen, but we're gonna get to my opinion on that in a moment. AEW starts off with the Cody Romo Cody Rhodes promo. What did you think of the promo? I specifically asked you to watch the opening so you could comment on this one. It was fine. See, I, and, see, and uh, some people were telling me it came off as very Dark Knight and Snake from Metal Gear Solid. I don't know what that is. Oh, uh, that's a video game. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't play video games. I got one hand, man. I can't do that crap. Well, I thought you would at least know what the video game was. Not, no, uh, I mean you because you're on the internet and you're in you know in wrestling discourse, video games and wrestling crossover so much. I thought you would at least heard of it. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> I have no clue what you're talking about. No, but uh, yeah, he's a big video. Cody's a big video game guy, and I was like, I know he's a big snake for Metal Gear Solid thing. So if that uh-huh. was, he was like, he was trying to decide what he was, and he called himself the Three Star General or whatever, and uh, I laughed at that because that's a lot. You know, when I, as a big Cody Rhodes fan, and as a person that defends him a lot uh yeah that's the big thing is that his matches are three stars and i'm just like oh yeah (laughs) now i get that line i just kind of i was like because yeah he was talking about being a perennial life or a job you know mid carter oh that makes more sense now okay yeah so um i laugh at it oh no it's perfect i laugh at that because you know of course the people that are like most in the Cody fandom or care exponential amount about him know that he is entertaining. I wouldn't call it in a non-traditional way. He's a, he loves eighties wrestling. He loves eighties, nineties wrestling. And that's what he is. If this was the eighties and nineties, he'd be one of the best wrestlers in the world. Right, because it wasn't it wasn't about super work rate in yeah. in yeah eighties early nineties wrestling. Um, it wasn't because all the work rate you know, especially in mid after the mid nineties when that whole group of people went from you know the super juniors tournament and they ended up in ECW and then ended up in WCW. That's when work rate started to become a thing. Yeah. Um, and prior to that, I mean, your biggest work rate people you had, um, yeah, Ric Flair obviously could work, but you had Ricky Steamboat who was a tremendous worker. You had Sting who was a good worker, but for the most part, you were dominated by you know your Hogans and your Lugers. And all of that, and no one's ever going to call either of those two guys work rate people. Um, yeah. So. No, but yeah, yeah, it, it 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 was fine promo. I just I didn't see too much in it. But again, I'm not a diehard Cody person. I'm just like, yeah, he's fine. I just thought whatever. he looked really cool in his uh, gaming chair with a uh, custom gaming chair with the American Nightmare logo. Dude. Yeah, I still I, I still think that tattoo on his neck looks like shit. Dude, and you know what? If you want to fight. We can. I mean, 
I really don't want to get my ass kicked by a very tall black man who's my good friend. Yes. So, because um, that's how that will end. And the only way it doesn't end is if somehow I sneak and get my nub into your throat, and then I choke you out. Well, I don't. I, th- I don't think I would personally fight you. I don't know if that's discriminating. I, I don't want to treat you different, but I don't think I would fight a one-handed man. You know. Sorry. That's fair. No, that's fair. I mean, you would literally have to swing at me first for me to. Return, try to restrain you, but I, I don't think I would fight that person. Yeah, I'm like, like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like I'm uh, the, I think the, the last time I got in a fight, I was in probably elementary school. Though, though my best fight ever, my brother, who's eight years older than me, he used to pick on me all the time. At one point, one day, he's picking on me like crazy, and I just lost it. And I, I, I was probably three or four. I launched myself at him, basically did like the, uh, um, the Thez press or no, the Thez, um, the thing you remember stone cold. Yeah, you, the thing Thez press. Jumps up. you said it yeah. right. So, so I jump up on him. I th- threw him to the ground and, and when I, I talk about having one hand, you have to picture, imagine if you look at your hand and about where your thumb starts, if you chopped off from there up, that's what I have is my right hand. I shoved that into his throat hard and he's, he's like choking, turning purple. Our mom walks in. She looks down, points at my brother, and goes, "Ha ha! That's what you get for fucking with him." And walks out of the room. <laughs> oh, best memory. Best memory. Stuff. Best memory yeah. is when. Best memory is when you get the best of your brother. I remember, uh, my brother's five seven. So, to to little Floyd, he was a giant, but to to grown size Floyd, he was not. And when I finally got bigger than him, and he used to just overpower me, now I was like, "Get off of me, little guy! Hey, buddy! Hey, little buddy!" Because I'm like, "Dude, I'm six foot, three hundred pounds," you know. And he's right. five seven, like one ninety or something like that. I'm like, "Hey." Yeah, I mean, I'm five seven for Pete's sake. Yeah, so. yeah. So, and I'm, I wouldn't call him tiny, but tiny compared to me. You know what I mean? Right. Well, I mean, when literally I'm looking at your picture on Skype is you standing next to Braun Strowman and you come up to Braun Strowman's shoulder. And we know Braun Strowman is just like ginormous. So if you've never met Floyd, ladies and gentlemen, he is a very tall man. You know, and it's funny. I even said Braun Strowman was the I've met the big show, but he wasn't standing up any time I met him. His hands were huge, but he never was standing up. I met. I met uh, I met Braun Strowman, and he was standing up when we took the picture. It was the first time I, in my life I've ever felt small. <laughs> well, and uh, just about everyone should. I mean, yeah. the only people who should not feel small next to Braun Strowman is someone like The Big Show. Yeah, so like, yes. like I met Keith Lee, and Keith Lee maybe a couple inches taller than me, about 50 pounds heavier than me, but he's, just, it, it, as they call it, a shit brick house. He is just muscle. You know, he is me if... I just worked out like all the time, you know what I mean? And I doubt I could still look as good as him, <laughs> but still, it was just like, it was like the picture of six, like he's six three three fifty, 350, and it was six foot 306, and it was like, those numbers seem similar, but no. No, uh, he he did a lot more with his 350 than I did with my 306. <laughs> real, real quick aside, do, have you ever kind of noticed that uh, Keith Lee, Cedric Alexander, and Adam Cole all have similar poses that they do? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, yeah. just that's 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 a side note. But yeah, overall, this promo I thought was fine. I it didn't rock my world. It didn't. Yeah, it did. It, it was fine. It was earth shattering, sir. It was the greatest promo ever. And if if you are a diehard Cody Mark, then absolutely, I'm sure it, it got your juices flowing it, and all that. It was the very greatest segment ever cut on April twenty second, two thousand twenty. Okay, that's fair. I didn't watch NXT this week, so I don't know if there's anything decent on there. But Dude, what are you, what are you doing with your time? So, okay, most mornings, uh, I was not as good this week, but this is this is my schedule. Get up at 5.30, um, w- work out. So uh, because I can't go to the gym, I do a series of calisthenic videos uh, that I watch on YouTube, make breakfast, uh, unload the dishwasher, so, take a shower. 
That's like twenty minutes. So what do you do? After oh no, that? no, that that's that's the working out is like thirty five minutes, thirty five oh. to forty minutes. Um, take a shower. That whole that whole process. I'm by the time I'm done, it's eight o'clock. Time for work to start. I work from eight to five ish, uh, and then uh, after work, I go on a jog. Um, okay, it's two thirds walk, one third jog, but but let me call it a jog. Uh, I come home, do one other uh, calisthenics video. But it's only about Good five. Good Lord, minutes. are you? And then are you okay? Then, yeah, I'm fine. No, because this, this sounds like you're obsessed with working out. <laughs> I'm just trying to not be a fat ass. That's all. No, no, that's more than not being a fat ass. The 35 minute workout in the morning is enough for most humans. <laughs> like, well, I'm, I'm trying. The I, fact that you do a second workout that's more than just trying not to be a fat ass. <laughs> well, you know, I'm trying to be, be in good shape. I'm trying to be healthy. I want my wife to actually find me attractive, all these things. Um, so uh, then I make dinner, and then I try to get ready for bed around 9-ish. So um, depending on – also, I'll have homework to do. Luckily, my semester is pretty much over. I've got one assignment I have to finish today, and then I'm basically done. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I try to keep up with my shows. It's been nice these last few weeks. It's amazingly working from home and not having commute has somehow made me busier. Um, but, uh, so I haven't been able to keep up with my shows as much. Thankfully my shows haven't been on. Uh, I mean, there's, there's Zoe's extraordinary playlist, uh, has taken a couple weeks breaks, but I've been able to keep up with it. Um, I just watched the most recent flash episode, but thankfully they were, you know, not putting out new episodes for about a month, probably because they're running out and they haven't been able to finish their season. I don't know what poor supernatural is going to do last season. I guess the last season is going to be last season and a half. Who knows? Um, so yeah, that's kind of my day. All right. Well, that doesn't, you know, well, I don't know. I don't know how you. I guess you don't. You. I don't have the school thing, and I don't have that pesky working out thing. I was gonna say I'm bored most of the time, so like I have to keep myself busy. So because if I get bored, I get I I start to get depressed if I get bored too much, and I just sit around and do nothing. You know what? You know what a great way to fill that time is. Pro wrestling. Watching AEW and NXT every week. (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) Yeah. So. We get Darby Allen and Sammy G, which what I consider the match of the week in any organization. Uh, any organization, um, d- uh, great callback to their last match when uh, Sammy G actually attacked Darby and jumped him before the match. They had a ladder spot, which, if you can tell, AEW does not seem to use gimmick ladders. They just, I guess. I've seen the ladder that you can use in AEW, I mean, you know, in the back. And they use the ladder. And, of course, because regular ladders are sturdy and were meant to hold really, really heavy people, two tiny people, in my opinion, they're tiny to me. Oh, uh, well, no, they're tiny. Yeah. They're, they're small. <laughs> they're not going to break that ladder. <laughs> no, and that was the bounce that happened when Sammy G, because Sammy G bounced and, and then uh, and then Darby Allen bounced off of it, and then just the way that Jericho sold that was great. Um, yeah, this was a really really good match, and I think the the call they they start talking about um, like uh, oh no 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 it was later it was later never yeah, mind so yeah. we'll get to that later. So um, uh, when they go bounce off the ladder, I will honestly tell you. When, when, as a person that watches wrestling, not going through the ladder looks like it hurts a hell of a lot more than going through the ladder. Oh, yeah. That's like every time that there's a table spot and the table doesn't break, and you're like, oh, God, that had to suck. Yeah, that Oof. looks like that hurts way more. So yep. more, more stuff not breaking. I mean, if, I mean, I don't know how it is for the wrestler. I would love to ask them. But if it doesn't hurt you more it just no visually it looks better when it doesn't break because when it doesn't break it looks like an accident and when it, and that leads into the level of realism yeah agreed yeah so uh the, uh, the match continues sammy having most of the offense uh darby is working on his leg and ankle we see a lot of different submissions. At one point, uh, Darby Allen actually takes off Sammy Guevara's b- boot and works on his foot. Uh, this leads to a moment. Um, was there a specific moment you were talking about before I talk about the end? 
No, no. It's just it was I I loved the um the the finish that yeah. out of nowhere that that pin that looks like how are you going to get out of that? The last supper. He's actually been getting the, he's actually used that move the last couple of weeks and a la New Japan, who I didn't I clearly said wasn't the best earlier, but that is something that that they've done like New Japan doesn't just debut a finisher and like like the best, you know, like the best of the super juniors, you will see the person doing the finisher in like preliminary matches and tag matches before they then debut it in and that and they get the move over. Well, that's what they've been doing with Darby in the last supper. They actually got the move over, then he used it, worked on the leg, th- built to the end where he then does the leg wrap and maybe that's why Sammy doesn't have quite the leg strength to kick out and that's how we got a winner. Yeah. Yeah, it was really good. These are these are two super, super talented guys. And it's um if they aren't both in the main it if, if all goes well and AEW's here for the long haul in, you know, five to ten years, if those two guys aren't in the main event, then I don't know, they got hurt, something went wrong. Yeah. Um, but, um, with me, Darby's Allen's trajectory is more of the next year or two. Sammy's got a longer trajectory. He loses a lot more than Darby does. If you think about it, Darby Darby has only lost to like Moxley, and he's he lost to Moxley and Cody, I believe, and, well, and Jericho I? and Jericho. Yeah. yeah, he's only lost to that top tier one talent. So he's very much on that second level of talent. So pushing him to that first level isn't there that much far. And with Darby, like. With some wrestlers, I'll be like, oh, they need to gain weight. They need to do this. Darby is who he is. I think if Darby gained like 20 pounds of muscle or something and got bigger, that would work against his gimmick. He has to look the way he looks. Yeah. Yeah. So, now. Agreed. Now, a couple other wrestlers I I, I feel differently about, just to say the least. Yeah. (laughs) Sammy could probably use putting on some muscle. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then there's a but I think you know putting on a whole bunch of muscle or anything like that would work completely against Darby's gimmick. Agreed. Matt Hardy checks in from the Hardy compound. Uh, he starts off as Broken Matt or Damascus. He says some people think my character is over the top, so I'm going to let you talk to my vessel, Matt Hardy. And Matt Hardy then cuts a promo, basically saying he's going to beat up everybody in the inner circle. And the reason he's helping the elite because the Bucks are his friends, Kenny Omega is his friends, and he knows Cody. It was so funny. He just, it was kind of like he kind of like I know Cody, <laughs> and they're all powerful. So why not be on the powerful side? And they're all powerful people in this company. Why not be on the powerful side? He says this uh, AEW is not about Jericho. AEW is not about Matt Hardy. It is about the youth, and he will do what he can to protect the youth, including kicking everybody's ass in the inner circle. So it looks like what they're building is Sammy G to come to the compound to fight Matt Hardy. So you think there's at some point there's going to be a Matt Hardy turn? No. I I mean, I don't think he'll ever go heel. I don't I don't know. Maybe. 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 Do you see a heel turn coming, sir? I don't know. Based on I, I didn't watch this segment, but based on what you were talking about, that seems like, you know, using the um uh subtlety hammer, it seems like a, a you know, laying the groundwork for a heel turn. I mean, hey, I wouldn't mind it. I'm just like, you know, I love me a good heel turn. Yeah. But the the funny thing is Matt Hardy talking about, you know, kicking a bunch of people's asses. It's like, dude, you can barely walk, man. Let's let's be honest. There's not a whole lot you can do anymore. Yeah, like, Poor guy. It's it's funny what people can do when they're allowed to do stuff. You probably would have said that same thing about Dustin Rhodes like two years ago, right? No, he always seemed like he could move. Yeah. At I'm least just, from what I can remember. I'm just saying it's like he had gotten fat a few years ago and you know, and it's like, oh, he got in shape and it's like when you actually have input on wrestling and you can have this, you know, energy for it, you know, maybe, maybe. And Matt Hardy, I don't ever think he was a super worker. You know, he was known for the TLC matches. and the, But, you know, no one ever is like Matt Hardy, one of the best wrestlers in the world. 
I mean, you know, if anybody out there is listening, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like, how do you fall off when you were never up? That's fair. <laughs> that is fair. That, yeah. Yeah. Totally fair. Yeah. But let's, um, let's talk about this match that blew up the, uh, the very, very small. And honestly, if we, if we're being truthful about it, insignificant wrestling Twitter, um, uh, this is hilarious to me because I watched the match. I watch while I'm working as I've mentioned, and it's Kenny Omega versus angels, Allen angels. They had a, what? 10 minute match. Uh, I think it was like seven minutes. Seven minute match. Kenny Omega dominated the match. Uh, he hit one V trigger in the ropes, and then he hit uh, a power bomb into a V trigger. Uh, power bomb into the V trigger, and that was the end. He didn't even use the one wing angel. He ended the match with the V trigger. Right, okay. and and yet somehow people were like, "Oh, he's ruined the V trigger by not pinning this jabron with it." I'm like, "He's never pinned anyone with the V trigger when he's in the ropes." Dude, he hit Okada. I think, I think one match, he hit him with like twelve V triggers. My big problem with the V trigger is that it was overused. I used to say that about Kenny Omega. It's a knee to the head. You that that should kill do, you. Yeah, you shouldn't have to do that seventeen times. You should do it once. But then someone told me, corrected me, that if you think of Kenny Omega as a video game character, now, of course, you don't play video games, so I understand that, but you think of him as a video game character, and his signature move is like the, you know, you know, is the V-trigger, like with, uh, you know, Guile has his flash kick or whatever. You don't just use that move one time in a fight. You use it whenever you can get it off. So when someone told me that, I was like, oh, I kind of get Kenny Omega now. Still not my favorite wrestler, but I was I was taking old school terms and trying to apply it to a new school wrestler. Yeah, and I guess um, poor uh, Ryan Satin apparently gotten raked over the coals for his opinion on it. But it was, to me, it's, I, I, after watching the match, I... I won. Here were my my few takeaways from the match. Uh, one, this angel dude is actually pretty good. Um, two, an argument to make about him, like about him getting so much offense on Kenny Omega, is if you think about it this way, in in this kid's head, this is his WrestleMania main event. This is the biggest thing he's ever done. So he's going to go out there, give it his all do everything he possibly can. It's like that scene in Rudy at the practice and the, the guy's complaining. He's like, Rudy's out here playing. We're in practice. He's playing like it's a Super Bowl. And the coach said, yes, and that's your problem. Um, it's this kid was Rudy. He's playing like it's a Super Bowl and it's just a squash, you know, a job match, a squash. And um, he, uh, he looked really good. The best part though, with, with Chris Jericho not knowing how to pronounce the guy's name and then making a reference to um, to Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> and, and then the Highway to Heaven show. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> I literally laughed out loud for a couple of minutes. It was so – and that's going to be – I mean, if you're, you know, if you're anything younger than a, a you know, a millennial – especially you'd have to be like the higher end of the millennial spectrum. You're not going to know what a Laura Ingalls wild is. You're not going to know what a little house on the prairie is. And you're certainly not going to know what uh highway to heaven is. So it just, I laughed so hard. And again, I've just got to say Tony Schiavone and Chris Jericho on commentary forever. Please. That is the best commentary duo I've heard in so long. It's so good. It's so freaking good. Um, I, I, you know, I've seen Kenny Omega. He had a match with Jack Evans. And Jack Evans loses, like, every match he has in AEW. They put on a longer match than this, and no one said anything. Yeah. So, Angels. Uh, Kenny Omega, again, his his style to me is more of, that I, he's a stamina monster. He doesn't, you know, 
basically his matches are going to go on forever and you just are not going to be able to keep up with him. He's, he is going to be in such good shape that you're going to wear out. He has never been a beat you in three seconds guy. That's no. not his style. So even when it comes to Allen Angels, if he would have just came out, V-triggered him, and got the pin, I think that would work against who Kenny Omega is. And Kenny Omega being a, you know established wrestler, I think it's his... I think it's better for him to have a longer match with Angels, see what he has, see if they want to use him in the future. And I would say, yes, they should use him in the future, because that guy was actually pretty darn good. Um, And, you know, and honestly, it's Kenny Omega. He's so polarizing. Uh, So, you know, the the man tells you the sky is blue, and half of Twitter is going to say he's lying. You know, it, it's it's just like a politician. He can't win for losing. Yeah. And, and it's it. Yeah. It's, people made a much bigger deal out of this. But I, again, in the in the time of of COVID nineteen, and people were stuck at home and bored out of their minds, the fact that they would latch onto this and make a big deal out of it kind of makes even, sense. I, and you know what's funny? I didn't even know it happened until Friday. <laughs> I, I, I when I'm at work. I am on the internet and much more active than I am when I'm at home. My TV's right there at home. You know what I mean? My kitchen's right there. I can cook some tasty food. I can watch a TV show. I don't need to be on the internet. When I'm at work, eh, I don't have anything else to do, so I'm on the internet a lot. So I never saw it actually happen. Uh, it was hilarious to me. I I got to I got to commend Ryan Sad. I you know, a lot of people are going to hate me for this. But this dude who everybody thinks is a WWE shield, which he may or may not be because, you know, he's on their show or whatever. He still gives his opinions knowing he's going to get killed. Oh, yeah. I I um, I like Ryan Satin. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah and, uh, uh, TMZ guy is, is – I've, I've always liked him. Yeah, but I'm just saying he knows he's going to get killed, and he still gives it. He still yep. gives it to you and still gives his opinion. I might not agree with his opinion, which I honestly didn't. I didn't think it was a big deal at all. But, I mean, look outside looking in, not a diehard AEW guy, I could see someone making that uh, 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 making that thought. My problem was he said casual fans. The whole thing. The uh, whole watch thing out, about- ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Floyd's going to go on a rant about how there is no such thing as casual fans. Get ready. I was not going to do that. I I have done that, and I've let that go. I have to understand the casuals out there don't care how long a match is and who wins and how dominant they are. They don't give a fuck. That's for us nerds. That's, exactly. Yeah, it's for the 1% of their audience that actually cares about that. It's like winning and losing, right? To a casual fan, wins and losses don't really matter in wrestling because their first thought when watching it, unfortunately, is it's not real. I always wonder, do people watch, like, do you watch Smallville like that? Like, every time he flies, man, he's not really flying. Screw this show. Nope. Do you do that? I don't understand why people do that with wrestling. It's such this big idea that it's not real. and It's like... 90% 90% of the TV you watch, even the stuff with real in the name, isn't real. Yeah. <laughs> That's my, that would be my rent. I think the only, I think for, and it's not as much a thing anymore, but for so long, wrestling insisted that it was real, whereas TV shows are straight up, no, we're fake. Yeah, now, it, again, it, it's not really the case anymore. And most of the audience isn't affected by that. Most of the audience lives in a time where there was no wool pulled over your eyes. You seriously, nineteen, I think it was eighty six or eighty seven. Vince McMahon came out and said wrestling is not real. You know, out there, you know, it's out there. He broke kayfabe, so they didn't have to uh, pay the same fees as uh, boxing commissions and things like that, right? Right, he was like, "Well, it's sports entertainment." Yeah, then this '90s steroids trial. There, there have been these big things where openly admit wrestling's not real, and it's like most people fall into the not real side of it. But it seems like people that are like 20 and 25 is like they were trying to pull the wool over your eyes, and I'm like, you have literally never lived 
in a time where they were trying to pull the wool over your eyes. Exactly. And so it's it's we- like I said, it's weird. I mean, I am a huge superhero movie fan. It is. Uh, hold on a second. This is so silly. Uh, I'm a super huge uh. A movie, a uh, comic book movie fan, and I just can't think. Thanos didn't really make the world go half away. <laughs> like I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Uh, 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 yeah, so I don't, I don't know why that's done in wrestling. It was a good match. I mean, I wouldn't even say it was a good match. It was a match. It was a squash match. I barely paid attention to it. I didn't pay attention to it until Friday when I heard there was a big thing and I had to watch it again. <laughs> Because I thought yeah. it was that insignificant. <laughs> so, then we get a Scorpio Scott video package. I thought that was extremely well done. Putting over, he had a back injury, and now he's coming back from it. It looks like Scorpio Sky's in line for a big push as a single star. We didn't get highlights from BTE. We've already talked about BTE. No reason to go through that. Then we get Orange Cassidy versus Jimmy Havoc. And Jimmy Havoc got a lot of offense in. He then put Orange Cassidy's hands in his pocket, which made Orange Cassidy fire up. And then Orange Cassidy uh, went off on him. And uh, there was interference from Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford, which is going to set up an announcement for later. But Orange Cassidy uh, looks havoc got, uh, I think, um, he got distracted by Kip Sabian and uh, Penelope Ford. Uh, who Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford and Jimmy Havoc are all roommates. They're all from the UK. Jimmy Havoc is like the creepy guy that lives with them. Uh, Orange Cassidy does like a um, octopus stretch roll up. I think that's the best way to describe it, and gets the pin on Jimmy Havoc. I know there's probably a proper wrestling name for it, but I don't have that proper wrestling name, so I'm just gonna go with that. Uh, then. Uh, we get, let's see, I'm just going through this. Then we get Wardlow versus Lee Johnson. Pins him with the F10. Uh, there was this match uh, part where Lee Johnson was on the second ropes and Wardlow did a thumbs down and did a knee to the face. That was one of the best knee to face I've ever seen. Um, we then get a video of a guy going to the Dark Order. Uh, telling them that, you know, white life hasn't been working out for him. Uh, Brody Lee asked how big he was, said he's 6'3". And he said, did you used to play uh, college football? And he said, yeah, I used to play college football. And then he's like, you're not along now. Uh, you are a part of the Dark Order. And it turns out Vanilla Vance, a.k.a. Preston Vance, is now a member of the Dark Order. He will be 10. He is the 10th member of the Dark Order. So it, who is Preston Vance? Should I should we should I have known who this guy is? Uh, he's Vanilla Vance, trained by QT. He's done a few uh, matches, you know, jobber matches where he lost. Uh, they see him as you know the future, you know. Okay. But he, he in in and honestly, if you wanted to use a New Japan turn, he is one of the young boys. Oh, okay. Fair he's gonna lose okay, a lot. Good. Yeah, but he obviously six three two forty. He's the future, you know. Um, he, 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 he's going to be, he's going to work out in the future of the company. We then get Brody Lee in a match with Justin Law, dominates him, hits him with the, uh, spin and clothesline. Uh, then we get the second installment of the bubbly munch. They want you to send in a flim flam dance, not TikTok, but flim flam. And uh, Sammy Vera won the dance and won a bottle of hand sanitizer which he seemed to be really excited about. Um, it, what's Flim Flam? They didn't want to say TikTok. Oh, okay. So they just called it Flim Flam. Okay. I'm they probably confused. offered TikTok, and they're like, hey, no, we're not getting no money. Flim Flam it is. Uh, Dustin Rhodes and Kip Sabian, it was a match. I I wouldn't say it was bad. wouldn't say it was good, but it was a match. I, so here's my opinions on this. It okay. was boring. Um, I watched it literally on double time, and it was still slow and boring. 
I mean, it was it was it was a gentleman's three. It was not that it wasn't well worked. The effort was fine. It was just so boring. Oh my lord, it was boring. Yeah, I don't. I did not find it boring. I watched it. It was just a match. Uh, they did a, a thing earlier this week where they basically said there's a stipulation that uh, there's a stipulation that Dustin was going to retire if he lost the match. You know, I don't say much negative in this world. No one bought that. No one bought that. That was that Dustin Rhodes' last match was going to be on a dynamite with no people in the audience. Yeah, that was... Why did they even need to do that? I don't know. Sound like somebody thought it was a great idea. And, yeah. It was funny because in the video on Road 2 when Dustin is saying it to Cody, Cody's like rolling his eyes and uninterested. And he said, you'll be proud of me. If it, in it, in it, I don't know if this is what they're uh, trying to get over. He's like, he's like, you'd be proud of me if I won the TNT championship. I was like, you know your brother's in the tournament, right? No, he wouldn't be proud if you won the TNT championship. He'd be pissed because he didn't win it. I was very confused on this whole thing. Dustin Rose, uh, they they book him like he's oblivious to certain things. And that, I guess that works. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just it was it was it was a match. It was there. There was I'm like, why was that the main event? Yes. I mean, and as they were getting off the news, uh, getting off the show, we got it a message from Tony Khan. The first time I've really heard him as kind of the booker of the show and them referencing him like that. Next week, we're going to have Best Friends with Orange Cassidy versus Jimmy Havoc and Kip Sabian with Penel- Penelope Ford in a match. And I was just like, okay. I mean, I mean, does the that... Did that does that match make you want to tune in next week? Uh, yeah. That yeah. this dynamite I thought was exponentially better than last week's. I thought it was exciting and fun and it hit all the notes that I needed it to hit. I you know, I was very happy that it was good cuz I was like, dude, I can't come on here and say the show sucked two weeks in a row. Give me something. I and I wasn't going to lie, but it was just like Give me something. And they actually gave a very entertaining show. I think what's big with AEW, and I've pointed this out when it comes to tag team match, the opening match sets the tone for the show. And and I think I think the opening match is more important than the main event. I can see that. Yeah, no, I mean, that was a great opening match. Yeah, let me say. But if I'm booking... Sammy, like, if I'm watching the show, it looks like it was recorded in reverse because Sammy G and Kip, uh, Sammy G and Darby Allen should have been the main event. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I feel if you started the show off, uh, if you uh, started the show off with Dustin and Kip Sabian, it would have change the whole tone of the show yeah no it would have been um that that just match shouldn't it was just yeah it was just boring i would say okay so here would have been the thing if you're if you were going to make darby and sammy the main event which it should have been you have omega and angels as the opening match because it was at least the other kind of high energy match or the orange cassidy havoc match could be the opener um, from what little I saw of that, but yeah, no, it's it was just it was a, it was, it was whatever. It, 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 yeah, and like I said, I understand some people. I thought it was I thought it was a good. I th- I wouldn't call it good. I thought it was a match. Yeah. So the other thing looks like I'm looking at our notes. We've got so next week on Dynamite, rolling this down. Dustin Rhodes taking on Lance Archer. And Dustin's going to lose. Semifinal match. Right, uh, Cody versus Darby Allen. Has Darby gotten his win against Cody yet? Nope. Gotten I'm his calling, win back? I, I in my tournament bracket, I called the upset. I say okay. Darby beats Cody. Um, but that would make the finals Lance Archer against Darby Allen. Um, that is the, for me, that is the classic story of wrestling. 
Really tiny guy, really big guy. And you can go either way with the winner. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, Brody Lee is going to murder Marco Stunt. Um, John See, Moxley's getting... Big guy against tiny guy. Yeah. John Moxley's going to cut a promo. And as you mentioned, the best friends with uh, Orange Juice are going to go against uh, Havoc Sabian uh, with Penelope Ford. Did you call him Orange Juice? Yeah, Orange Cassidy, Orange Juice, Sol Monster, whatever. Sol Monster? What's Sol Monster? From Sol Monster Sounds Off, he looks like Jason Solomon. Oh, uh, I didn't, I, don't, yeah. I didn't, I didn't, yeah, yeah, that's your, yeah. that's your, that's your thing. You bring him up all the time, I have no idea what he looks like. He could walk into my house right now, say I'm Jason Solomon, and I'm like, who the fuck are Jason Solomon? Yeah, he looks just like Orange Cassidy. It's kind of, kind of eerie. Um, but his, it's one of my favorite wrestling podcasts yeah. is, uh, Solomon Monster Sounds Off. It was actually the first podcast I ever listened to. Yeah, my first podcast was the Voices of Wrestling flagship. Well, my first non-Jericho, the Okana podcast was that. And I just know how that how good that can be. Yeah. All right, AEW rankings as of Friday, April 24th. We don't generally do this, but I saw them, and I just thought, it, you know, you'll probably get why I do this in a minute. Uh, tag rankings. Of course, Kenny Omega and Hangman are the champions. At five, we got the Lucha Bros at one and two. SCU at two and three. The Best Friends at four and three. Nick and Matt at two and two. And the Dark Order as undefeated. So I imagine we're going to get the Dark Order versus Kenny Omega and Page at double or nothing. But we will see. The other rank, women's rankings. Uh, of course, Nyla Rose, your champion. We got Rio at 3-3 three and three at 5. Uh, we got Britt Baker at 3-3 three and three at 4. Yuka Sakazaki, 1-1 one and one at 3. Chris Statlander, 2-3 and three at, uh, she is at 2. And the number one contender is Hakaru Shida at 7-1. and one. So wait a minute, how can Chris Statlander with a losing record be uh, ranked number 2? Is it because everyone else has a tied record? Not only has she been ranked number two, I believe she actually lost the title match to Nyla Rose. So I feel like she should be five if she's even ranked. Yeah, that doesn't, I don't understand how that math works. I like discourse, but since most of these people haven't wrestled, Britt Baker should be the number one contender by default because I think she's the only, well, Sheeta should be one and Britt Baker should be two because they're the only two that can wrestle. Right now, yeah. And then you have the men's ranking. You got John Moxley as the world champion, uh, Jake Hager at five, Lance Archer. Uh, with, uh, Jake Hager's at five at four and one. His one loss being to John Moxley. Uh, we got Lance Archer at three and zero. Oh. You know he did be he did be Colt, so I guess that makes you know that's a that's a quality win there. You got Darby Allen at five and two at the, in the three spot. So those are two contenders for the TNT Championship. Then you got uh, Kenny Omega, 4-0. and He's at uh, number two. And the number one contender for a title he can't win at 7-1, and Cody. Uh, uh, Cody. Just Cody for right now. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. And now these rankings are from January. So every – because then it's got your overall. That's from the beginning of AEW. Is that correct? Correct. Now, do these rankings, like any time Kenny goes to AAA to defend the, because he is, isn't he the AAA Mega Champion? Yes. Um, do those matches count in these rankings? I'm going to say no. Okay. Because I wasn't yeah. sure about that. I don't think it does, but maybe. Because since AAA is kind of canon in AEW, kind of. Kinda. Yeah. I, I honest I honestly could not tell you if it does. I wish I could. Um let's see. All right, the last thing is on April thirteenth, about thirteen days ago from the recording, uh Cody Rhodes filed a trademark. The day after the trademark ended on WWE from WWE, Cody Rhodes uh filed a trademark for his name, Cody Rhodes. So he will be using Cody. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, Cody Rhodes is going to be able to use his name going forward as we were talking to, uh, we, uh, we were talking about it earlier, uh, uh, we were talking about it earlier that, uh, 
anything WWE did before the trademark expires, so they can still use going forward, including his name on TV, T-shirts, anything he did before going forward. It looks like if it goes through, Cody would own all that information. I don't know if he's going to use the name Cody Rhodes in wrestling, but he would have to. Be, you have to use it. You have to put it on a shirt or something because if you don't, then the trademark expires again. Yeah, I would think he would. It would just be because just saying Cody doesn't have a good ring to it. Um, if he was able to, you know, go back to calling himself Cody Rhodes, it would just work better. Okay, yeah, I I completely agree. I I am a Cody Rhodes fan. I still call him Cody Rhodes. I very rarely call him just Cody, if ever. So, there you go. Uh, but yeah, so thanks for being on the show, Dave. Uh, do you have anything Welcome. else before we get out of here? Um, not that I can think of. I just uh, hope everyone is doing well and staying safe and uh, not doing anything stupid out there. So. Just, just be careful, everybody. Yeah, definitely. I, I completely agree with that. Uh, you know, be careful. Practice sexual distancing. But, you know. Wait, did you say sexual distancing? I mean, I guess. No, my friend, uh, my friend's on Tinder. They, they're they like, they're not liking this. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, no, practice social distancing. I And like I said, I am not one of those super panicky people. But it's like, does it hurt anything to be safe? It no. doesn't. So do that. You know, I want the world to start up as quick as anybody else does. Uh, I, you know, as actually probably quicker than a lot of you do. I mean, but uh, it's just if we have to do it, might as well do it right. Don't do it wrong and then say it didn't work. Agreed. <laughs> it's like if you got to do it, do it right. You know, practice social distancing. I. You know, I don't wear a mask. That's a big thing with me. I'm like, they annoy the hell out of me. So I went to Walmart yesterday, went in and out. But I can be real and say this. I literally work with a central worker that works at a cash register at a grocery store. If I was going to get it, I would have it by now. Yeah. I mean, she literally talks to uh, hundreds of people a day, touch money, touch cards, and then she comes home. Yeah, how uh, how y'all both haven't gotten it? I don't know. Exactly, it's just like one of those things. As like you know, and I'm a diabetic. It's like there's a whole thing. It's this thing was like built to kill me. <laughs> and we don't. We need more Floyd in the world. So please, Rona, stay away from Floyd. You know what? I I don't really want to die that way. But you know, if you know, I always say if some you know somebody gets hurt or dies and it saves other people. Because the big thing with me, I don't know anyone personally that has gotten corona. So it really does make it less real for me. Right. You know, I don't know anyone. So I, I'm glad I don't. I, I feel, they feel like I'm blessed that I don't. But it's it's a real thing. It's happening. There are people that have passed away from it. Take care of yourself. Uh, even if you're not doing it for you, do it for the person that you love most that you might give it to. Exactly. All right. Exactly. Well, and, well, you know, life is tough. Yeah. Life is tough. And what you got to remember, always kick out a two, baby. It, it's a work. Don't forget to kick out a two. Yeah. No, I, uh, I, I even yeah. fucked up the old catchphrase. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, so. This is why I don't do catchphrases. I don't have one. Yes. I, I, I like the end of mine with the catchphrase. But, no, but seriously, uh, whether you're uh, – but seriously, I just, I just, again, I, I implore you to do the best for everyone around you. Uh, and I will say this and end you with this. Whether you're at home, at home, or at your essential job, always do your best to be elite.